Okay, so pre-calculus 20, um, the first section, we're talking about sequences and series. Uh, we just talked about the golden ratio, right, or the golden um, uh, rectangle. Uh, we talk about this, uh, this spiral right here, okay? This is a special spiral. We see this in nature uh, in here, and in the video that we just watched together as a class, uh, you see it in ancient uh, architecture and sculpt, uh, sculptures and different things like that. When we talk about sequences or lists of numbers, um, this is a special sequence. And actually, a series is the sum of uh, the items in a sequence. And there's a famous series called the Fibonacci uh, series. And that's the sum of all of these numbers. So if we take a look at this and we talk about this special ratio, so where does this come from? Well, let's just put it right here, okay? If you look at these numbers here, and these rectangles that are formed here, the sequence is actually this. It's one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on. Okay, so this is a this is a special sequence that um, comes from this. So so if you take the first one, and uh, obviously there's a, nothing before it. So if you add this number plus the term that's before it, which is nothing, you get one. You get itself. If you take this term now and add the one before it, you get two. One plus one is two. If you take one plus two and add those together, you get three. Two and three is five. Three and five is eight. Five and eight is thirteen. So as this, as this grows, as this sequence continues on, you start to get um, a pattern. And as we saw in the video, this pattern, this golden ratio um, that we can see here in, in the, and the golden ratio would be sort of like this side of the rectangle compared to this side. It's about 1.6, and that's a, a ratio <coughs> that is found a lot in nature, okay? So that's kind of the intro a little bit there, and we, we took a look at this Donald Duck uh, video on YouTube, and he taught us about the golden ratio. But when we take a look at section 1.1, and so you can turn there in your textbook if you uh, would like to follow along, page 6. And this is uh, Pre-Calculus 11, McGraw-Hill, Ryerson that we're, we're, uh, we're looking at here today. We see that sequences are important in scientific study. And one of the things that um, is, is talked about in the book here is Halley's Comet. Now, I don't know if you've had anybody heard of Halley's Comet before. Okay, so this is a comet that uh, it's a it's a big ball of, of ice and, and and gas, and as it moves through uh, space, it kind of bursts forth this gas, and, and it has this big long tail of debris and dust and ice and gas and all this sort of stuff, and you can see it in the night sky like this. Now there's a history behind this comet. Okay, so this guy named Edmund Halley, uh, he noticed that there was this phenomenon in the sky that came about. Every uh, sort of so many years, there was a list of the years that this comet had been seen on Earth. And so he figured out, people thought it was actually different comets, but he figured that this might be the same comet coming back around Earth periodically. And so if you notice these numbers, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit. If you notice these numbers, 1531, 1607, 1682, he, he figured that if this is the same comet, and it's been coming around the Earth uh, as recorded in these years, that there may be a pattern emerging. And he predicted that the comet would be seen again in 1758. Now, he died in, I think it was 1742, so he didn't get to see this, but after he died, of course, people knew about his prediction, and when it came true, they, um, they, they named it Halley's Comet. And uh, anyways, if you look at these numbers, there's something that's interesting about these numbers. Um, where's the 1705? Did I miss the 1705? Uh, so we got 1531, 1607, 1682, and then 1705, uh, 1758. Now all these numbers are separated by a certain number of years, right? What's the difference between each one of these numbers? About 76, okay? Give or take, right? 76, pretty close to 76. So Edmund Halley predicted that this was a comet that was actually in orbit around the sun, and it, it came about every about 76 years. Now, this was, uh, 
sorry, this comet was seen, I believe, in 1986. <coughs> and I remember seeing this comet in the air. So what was I? Uh, I was about 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. And I remember seeing this comet. And I'm hoping, Lord willing, to be around to see it again. I might see it twice in my lifetime. But it, it comes by every 76 years. So if we take a look at these numbers, right, those numbers form a series. And it's a, uh, or sorry, a sequence, a special kind of sequence, an arithmetic sequence. <clears throat> so for you and your notes, you're following along with your textbook, um, I'm going to get you, as we move through this course, I'm going to get you to write down uh, some of the important terms. So I've got some of the important terms on the side here as I go through this. I'm going to get you to jot down your own notes here by writing down the important terms and a definition. You can use your own words if you want, but I would like you to kind of have a running record of the important things that we talk about in class. So I'm not going to be writing all of the notes um, by hand here in this course, but I'll be clipping from the textbook and highlighting some of the things that you should be writing down uh, for your own. And again, when you're doing your homework, you can look back to your notes and that's where you get a bunch of information to help you when you get stuck. Yes, you can look back at the textbook too, but as you write this, you can jot your own little notes, your own little examples, and all this sort of stuff, and you can create your own memory of this. When you look at a textbook, you can't remember everything that's on a textbook, but as you write it down, it kind of gets ingrained in your memory. That's why notes that are, um, you know, if you make notes of important things, you're more likely to remember those important things and to be able to, to use them. So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the difference between each consecutive term is constant. Okay, So as we looked at these numbers, the appearance of Halley's Comet was about every 76 years. So these numbers form an arithmetic sequence. Again, a sequence is a list of numbers. A series is something different, and I'll talk about series next section. Okay. So let's explore a little bit about um, arithmetic sequences. Let's just take a, a, a real close look. Now we talked about the difference between the terms in a sequence, and that's called the common difference. And it's, uh, it's given the symbol D, okay, lowercase d. That's the common difference. And this right here, it looks kind of confusing, but all this is, the common difference is the difference between any term in the sequence and any given term is given the notation t sub n, t of n. And that's just the nth term in the sequence. Okay, Could be the first, could be the seventh, or the twentieth. You take that term and you subtract the term that was just before it. So t of n minus 1. So you take any, any term and you subtract. So in this case, let's do 22 minus 16. And we can easily see that the common difference here is what? 6, right? 22 minus 16. It's the same as if you take 16 minus 10, you get 6. 28 minus 22, you get 6. That's the common difference. Okay? So arithmetic sequence has a common difference between the terms in the sequence. I mentioned this T of n. That's called the general term. Okay? The general term symbol is T sub n. Okay? T of n. And of course, what we do in math is we recognize patterns, we associate certain uh, quantities with symbols, and we try and come up with a description, a mathematical, algebraic description for this pattern. And so that's the first thing we're going to build here is sort of the equation for the general term of an arithmetic sequence. Okay? And it's going to look a little confusing. It's like, why do you make that so tough? You just add the... <laughs> it's, but it's going to help you later on when you're trying to find different parts of the, of the sequence. So it's important to come up with some kind of um, uh, formula or equation here. All right, so the terms in a sequence are denoted by, the first term is T1, okay? T1 is the first term. T2, or T sub 2, is the second, and T sub 3 is the third, and so on. In this arithmetic sequence, we see that the sequence of numbers would be 10, 16, 22, 28, and so on. Now, how do we get each successive term? Well, we start with term 1, and then we add the common difference. And then you, then you add the common difference again to get the next one, and the common difference again to get the next one. That's what this row is showing us. So you start with the first term, and you can add any number of common differences to get any of the other terms that follow. 
So let's take a look at this third, this third or fourth row here. So you have T1, then you have T1 plus D, then you have T1 plus 2D, then you have T1 plus 3D, and so on. And a pattern emerges. So let me explain how we get to this right here. So we always start with T1. That's in each one of these determinations. And you're adding a one common difference for the second term. You're adding two common differences for the uh, third term. You're adding three common differences for the fourth term, etc. And so notice that the number of common differences that you add equals one less than the term that you're trying to find. Okay, I'll say that again. The number of common differences that you add to the first term is one less than the term number in the sequence. And so that's where this n minus 1 comes from. Okay? So if I want to get t of n, if I want to find out what that is, I take the first term and I add whatever is 1 less than this number, that's n minus 1, times the common difference. And you come up with this general term. So please, if you haven't yet, write down, um, write down this general term formula for an arithmetic sequence. All right, so now that you have that, uh, that formula written down, um, you understand that T1 is the first term, N is the number of terms, or the number of the term you're trying to find. That's T of N is the general or nth term, and D is the common difference. So let's get some practice here. Um, what I'm going to do, we're going to split this sec uh, section into two days, as I mentioned, and I'm just going to do some of your homework questions with you. Okay, this is from your textbook. Uh, this is part of your homework. So if you want to flip to your homework page or however you're organizing that, um, I am going to take in your homework for, for Mark, so if you don't want your homework to be submitted with your notes for whatever reason, you can start your homework in a different part of your text, your notebook if you want, however you want to do that. But this is sort of homework that, um, that you'll be submitting, okay? So question number one. It says, identify the arithmetic sequences from the following sequences. So there's obviously more than I've got here, but I'm just gonna, we're going to take a look at a couple and we're going to examine whether they are arithmetic or not. And then if they are, we're going to state T1, D, and then we're going to find the next three terms. So let's take a look at 1A, and it um, might be a good idea for you to write those numbers down, just like this. And let's see if this is an arithmetic sequence. So again, an arithmetic sequence is a list of numbers where the difference between each of the numbers that we see, or each of the numbers in total, right, would be the same. The difference would be the exact same. So we need to check what the difference is between each of these numbers. So uh, 16 to 32, well, that looks like it's, we're adding 16, right? 32 to 48, that's another 16. 48 to 64, what's that? Is that 16 too? 64 to 80 is 16 as well. So here we have an arithmetic sequence, yes. A is arithmetic. The three dots just mean that this pattern continues indefinitely. All right, so for A, because this is arithmetic, let's list T1. So remember, T1 was the first term of the sequence. So what's T1? Go ahead and shout it out if anybody knows. 16, yeah. It's just simply the first number that's listed. Okay, that's T1. All right, um, D, we figured that out, was what? 16, and it's going to be a positive 16. If this goes up, it's positive, right? If it goes down, it's negative. And if you take any term and subtract the term before it, you'll get the common difference. 32 minus 16 is a positive 16. Okay, and the next three terms would be what? Uh, so 80 plus 16 is 96. 96 plus 16 is, well, this is, this is good to get your mental math going again. I know you guys have just come off the summer here. So 112, one did you say? Yeah, 112, okay. And then plus 16 is, uh, sorry, 112 plus 16 is 128. Okay, so there's the next three terms, correct? I'm coming off the summer too, so you have to double check my math here. All right.
Okay, so you get that? I'm just going to do the one, and we're going to go to number two here so we can get a few examples in before the bell. Okay, number two. Leave some space if you want. Let's do number two. Write the first four terms of each arithmetic sequence for the given values of T1 and D. Okay, so T1 is 5, so that's going to be the first term is 5. The difference is 3. So the next one's going to be what? The next one's going to be? And four terms, so we've got to go? 14. Okay, first four. That's easy, right? Pretty easy. If you have a negative number, don't fret. You write that negative number down, that's your first term, and then a difference of negative means that you subtract, or you add the negative. Okay? So this is actually going to be what? Negative 5. Negative 9. nine and negative 13. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because we are running out of time in our class, but let's do, let's see if we can do number three and four here before the bell rings. So for this sequence, in number three, it's defined by this. So there's the formula for the general term. So find each indicated term and uh, let's see, I didn't copy that out exactly. So T1, okay, so T1 is, well, T1 is defined as three times one plus eight. Do you see how n equals 1, so you just put n equals 1. So t of 1 equals 11, right? If I asked you for t of 5, let's say that, then t of 5 is 3 times 5 plus 8. That's easy. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 8 is 23. When you're doing your homework, I will strongly encourage you to circle your answers. Show your work and circle your answers, okay? Um, please do that because when I'm looking at your work, I kind of want to see your work and your answer. I want to be able to pick that out, okay? So please circle your answers. And finally, number four before the bell rings here. For each arithmetic sequence, determine the values of T1 and D. State the missing terms. Okay, well here we have to think just a little bit. So the common difference can come from the subtraction of 23 minus 19, right? 23 minus 19. So what's the common difference there? Four. It is a 4. Okay, so plus 4 or negative 4? Plus. Or positive or negative. Yeah, it is. It's positive 4. Okay? So that means that we would add 4 to get to the next one. So if we have to go back, we subtract 4. So this one's going to be 15. Minus 4 is 11. Minus 4 is 7. Okay? Okay? So, um, yeah, so we, we shortened classes here today. So for the first one, um, I do have 5 and 6 that I was going to go over with you, but the bell is going to ring any second. So, the first part of this section is number one to seven. Okay, so in your textbook, number one to seven. And there's the bell right there. So I want you to work on that for tomorrow. I've gotten you a, a good start. And we will do the second part of 1.1 tomorrow. Okay? All right, congratulations. You got the first class under your belt. Have a great day.